Welcome back to Book View Now here at the Los Angeles Times Festival of the Book. I'm Jeffrey Brown, and I'm joined now by Dawn McKean. Her new book is The Hundred Year Walk, an Armenian Odyssey. Welcome to you. Thank you for having me. This is both a personal story and one of great expansive history, right? Yes, absolutely. Tell me how it started. So, um, ever since I could remember, my mother would always tell me about what happened to her father during World War I, and there were very sad stories of this, this man who was desperate to survive and had to cross the desert and, and with, with barely any water. And, um, but I, di I didn't understand the story because I didn't learn about the Armenian genocide in school. I learned about the Holocaust. I learned about other atrocities, and I mm -hmm. didn't understand. And, and it really was a mystery to me until I was in my 30s and my, a relative translated my grandfather's journals into English and I could finally read what happened to him. Go back before that. So you were growing up in a, did you identify as Armenian? Uh, um, was that part of your, part of your youth? Right, I'm half Armenian, yeah. and so my father was not Armenian. So yeah. I don't, I don't speak Armenian. I don't read Armenian, uh -huh. and I, I didn't know a lot about my own family history yeah. until I was an adult. And I just been working as a reporter for many years. And then when I finally read my grandfather's story, I could not believe what he endured, that this endangered protagonist was my own grandfather. And, and it's a story that many people don't know about. And so yeah. it felt a real responsibility to, to write about and investigate and, and share his story. All right, so tell us part of the story. I mean, which, which interestingly, as you say, he wrote himself in some sense. Right? Yes. He, so we started off with some of what he had written, and then we discovered more of his journals mm -hmm. um, documenting exactly what happened to him mm -hmm. during World War I when he was um, a, a courier in his town outside present-day Istanbul, and um, the Ottoman government uh, issued an order to deport the Armenians from their homes, mm -hmm. and my grandfather ended up being separated from his family and ended up on a death march mm -hmm. in um, what's now... Um, Eastern, present-day Eastern Syria, where um, the Islamic State um, is under control, has the area yeah. under control. So my grandfather's story—it's really—it's—it's—it's—he it's, it's, details everything, you know, dates, names of people in his caravan, how really? he felt, and so as a reporter, it was kind of—it was a dream to work with, although it was very difficult to find material, but it was all these clues, and so I just had to follow the clues. Who was he writing it for, do you know? I mean, was this like a personal diary? He wanted people to know what happened. Yeah. It was very important to him, and he felt, he, he wrote that in his journals that it was his duty to tell the world what happened, and if you read his journals, there's also people who died alongside him, yeah. and they, they begged him as they were dying, saying, tell, if you survive this, tell what happened. And so he felt a real responsibility. And then my mother felt a real responsibility to tell me, even yeah. when I was a kid, and I didn't understand. And then I, of course, feel this responsibility to tell. So give us an example of, of, of a story that he told along the way that... Uh so um, my grandfather, um, he was in this caravan, and, and um, he realized that, uh, you know, they were slaughtering everyone in this caravan. He knew he was going to die, and so he um, and many people had given up, but he he summoned this incredible courage and managed to escape, and then he crossed the desert for six days with two cups of water and had to drink his own urine um, to survive mm. and and made it to the Euphrates. And eventually there was an Arab sheikh, a Muslim Arab sheikh, who took in my Christian Armenian grandfather, despite mm. the rhetoric that the Armenians were dangerous. And mm -hmm. and my grandfather became like a son to him. And, yeah. Yeah. and it's a powerful message for me to, to ignore propaganda about uh, a certain ethnicity mm -hmm. and, you know, to really look beyond the boundaries of, you know, religious difference mm -hmm. and ethnic difference mm -hmm. and to accept other people. And so when I, I retraced my grandfather's steps. Yeah, that's what I want to get to. So, I mean, it begins with you reading his own account and that clearly grabbed you, right? That was an amazing experience there. Absolutely. And then you decide to go further. Yes, absolutely. So after I read his account, I had to see the land where yeah. my grandfather 
barely survived and so many perished. And so in 2007, I set out to retrace his, his death march and, um, but I didn't walk it. <laughs> I, I mean, and I, so I followed his, his footsteps and I also wanted to find, to see if I could find the, the clan of this Arab sheikh Mm -hmm. who saved my grandfather's mm -hmm. life, and I was able to. Yeah, and what happened? It was one of those incredible moments of my life to when I arrived in the village, 300 people were there to greet me, and they all came at me, you know, just with, with like, just, just love and hugs and kisses, and then the women whisked me away in this kind of this Cinderella moment where off went my dusty travel clothes, and mm -hmm. they put me in this beautiful dress, and they had a feast for me, and I was able to thank them for saving my grandfather's mm -hmm. life, and it was, it was one of the most important moments in my life to be able to say that on behalf of my family. This trip took you into Syria before the Civil War, right? Yes. And what did you see? It, you know, you see, I, I had read so many accounts of what had happened there. So you see the desert's very flat in that area. So it mm -hmm. makes it very difficult for my, you know, for Armenians to escape um, from the caravans and mm -hmm. the Turkish gendarmes. And, um, but when I was there, I also, I was in the Raqqa area where, you know, now you, you can't go. And, right, of course. And where there's, there's genocidal crimes being committed in that mm -hmm. same area where the Armenians were mm -hmm. slaughtered a century ago. And it's the saddest part that history is repeating itself mm. in that same mm -hmm. region. But the people, when I was there, they're incredible. And they're just the most incredible people. And they, they thought that I was, when they first heard that I was coming, they thought I was in danger and they wanted to take oh, me really? in. They wanted mm -hmm. to take me in. And so mm -hmm. it just says a lot about the hospitality and, and the nature of the... Did, did, did the um, experience of seeing the landscape and meeting the people match up with what your grandfather had written? I mean, the details of the, of the place? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. It, well, it was more... And as I traveled farther east, it, the landscape, you know, from Turkey into Syria and um, a, toward the Iraq border, it, the landscape becomes more and more stark. And mm -hmm. so I, I it, it was more stark than I had thought mm -hmm. that, that I, but it did, it was very, just the, the flatness of it was what stayed with me because so many Armenians would write about how difficult it was to escape. Mm -hmm. And and that's why my grandfather chose night often to, as a cover to, to escape the caravan. Mm -hmm. He just kept escaping, escaping. And and uh, even though the book can, has some difficult material because mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a story of a man surviving a genocide, it's, yeah. it's also a courageous story. Yeah. And he, my grandfather summoned incredible courage and, and he's just, he's my inspiration like, to just combat so many uh, adversities and to keep his inner strength yeah. and, and to, to survive it. He escaped, but a lot of people did not. Absolutely. Did he feel, uh, feel that? Uh, I mean, a, a guilt over that? Or a, how does this, how does the world work? Uh, yes. Yeah? He, for example, my, um, when my mother, my parents got married, he almost didn't attend because he told my mother that it was difficult for him to be at joyful occasions. Yeah. Because he, it was so he had he saw so many people die, mm -hmm. that it was, it was it was difficult for him, and mm -hmm. he he definitely struggled later in life. But I, I think his answer was to talk about it, and he talked about it all the time with my mom and the rest of my family, and he just kept working on his journals, mm -hmm. and he just wanted his whole story to be told. Mm -hmm. So I feel very honored to yeah. be able to fulfill that now, for him. Even as you're telling this story, of course, the whole issue of the genocide is still deeply contested territory, right? By the Turks, by the Turkish government. Did you run into, to what degree did you run into that? Yes, I, I run into that somewhat. Um, but for me, being there, I, I spoke with a lot of people and I thought I would be more angry when I, you know, they would disagree with what happened but I, I you know for me in the end I, it came down to education for me mm -hmm. and um, this is a narrative that the Turkish government has been saying you know that there I mean it was not genocide they've been teaching school children that for years mm -hmm. so I can't be angry I mean I mean there is a responsibility for people to educate themselves and I think it's easier now in this digital age to mm -hmm. educate 
yourself by going online, reading consular documents, and but um, to me, it's about education, and that's that's what that would be my dream mm -hmm. is for there to be more mm -hmm. education about what happened. As you and as you've said, of course, we see people walking now, right, fleeing right. in the news in similar ways. Do you see parallels from when you're reading your father's journal, grandfather's journals? Absolutely, yeah. and and that's a heartbreaking part of it. Mm -hmm. And some of the people I met when I was in Syria. And they've told me since the war has broken out, they said, we now know what your grandfather went through yeah. because, you know, we would have never imagined that that area would, you know, here they were sharing and stories that they heard through their families about what had happened to the Armenians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. along the Euphrates. And now so many of them are facing that. And you, and you see it. I mean, it's a genocide that's going on over there, not only with minorities, but also with, with other Muslims who are being declared not faithful enough. And it's, it's, it's just heartbreaking to see history mm -hmm. repeat itself. All right. The 100-year walk in Armenian Odyssey. Don McKean, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.